so much pain right now. I'm in so much pain right now. I still have to finish my bus run. A few more minutes, I start my third run. I try to be strong. I try to think of others who have it worse than me. I do appreciate what I have. The facts are the facts are the facts. What I am feeling in my body right now is not a lack of faith. What I'm feeling right now in my body is overwhelming pain. It's on the verge of crippling me. I know the Lord will get me through this last run, get me home where I can lay down for a little bit. I don't know if I'll make it for my second run, but deal with it when it comes. I gotta go finish my third run for this morning. Bye. I'm here at work. By God's grace. Um, it's strange because it's not that I feel any better. It's not that I feel any stronger. Uh, the pain is the same exact pain as it was earlier this morning but it's God's grace and his strength miraculously pushing me to be here and uh, will be with me as I do my afternoon bus transportation which I really enjoy a lot and uh, I just I'm doing this video to give God the glory for being there for me. And it's by his grace that I am even here this afternoon. So, thank you, Lord. Now, doing my afternoon run. I usually have two, but I only have one because one of the schools is closed. God's grace has been carrying me throughout the day. Thank God it's a beautiful day too. Sunny, warm. The only way I can explain it is that I'm like in this Holy Spirit bubble that's, you know, I don't want to say pushing me, but leading me where I have to go. And, inside this bubble of strength and grace. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. You are the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm done for the day. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I'm still in a lot of pain, but um, I made it through the day. Uh, Monday nights, my church has uh, women's and men's Bible studies, individually, separate. My fiance Maggie goes to the women's Bible study, and when I can. I like to go to the men's Bible study. They start at the same time and they end at the same time. I'm looking forward to going there. Hopefully I can make it. 
physically speaking. It's been a rough day. I had to uh, lay down during my break in between my two shifts. I read my Bible devotions for the day. I prayed. I uh, reading another book which is on prayer the pastor gave us who are in the prayer team it's very very good and these uh, you know reading God's word and reading good sound godly books that help explain the Bible and the topics of the Bible are really good and encouraging and they're feed you know they feed my soul they feed my my brain helps my brain to you know break things down better and assimilate them and take them in and then you know deposit them where they got to go and they're in their own folders and um because it stimulates different parts of the brain which is very important but um I'm going to try and, and uh, look for this one clip in a movie called The Robe that was made, I believe, in either the, I think the 60s, maybe late 50s, early 60s. And it's about a man who's a centurion who lived in Rome with his parents and his, you know, sisters. And, um, he got himself into hot water with a man who would become the emperor. And so his punishment for offending this man was that he was sent to Jerusalem, which at that time was not the greatest place to be in the world. Uh, actually is kind of not such a great place to be in the world and what this future emperor figured he'd do by sending this centurion there was to basically you know he would figure he would die and would get rid of him but um, I don't want to give away more about the movie because I think you should watch it it's really cool it's called the robe great actors I'm sure it won awards back in the day I actually have it on VHS <laughs> cassette tape uh, but there's a scene in there where a woman who was a cripple Um, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to find the clip. I'm going to play it and incorporate it into this video. Because it's it really captures the way I have accepted my life to be. I have accepted God. I pray for my healing every day. Uh, actually, that's not true. <laughs> I do not pray for my healing every day. I pray for my healing every once in a while, maybe once every couple of weeks. I do pray for God's strength and grace to keep me going and that he would show me mercy. I pray for others for their healing. Uh, look up, his name is Nick Vujicic. And he wrote a book, Life Without Limbs, and he is such an inspiration look him up uh, I, I would do a disservice if I try to explain this guy Nick Vujicic also you can look up a woman her name is Joni Erickson Tada and she was Christian and then I think she was in her early teens she you know was hanging out with her friends and family at the family pool the family, you know in the house and um, 
she dove into the shallow end and snapped her neck and became a quadriplegic. And she was very, very mad at God and the world for the longest time. But then she made peace with God and accepted her situation and her condition. God has used this woman who is now, I think, in her 60s, has used her mightily. She has written books and songs and traveled the world and created you know, an organization that provides free wheelchairs for people and so many other things. Her name is Joni Erickson Tada. And Nick Vujacic, amazing man of God, humble. I mean, I, I think about him and this guy's always smiling and the guy has no arms or legs. He has a foot. Barely, it's not even really a, a regular foot. And God has used him. He, he, he's a motivational speaker. He is a Christian. He goes around to churches and you know, encourages people. He goes to men's prisons. I watched a video. He went to a men's prison, and he, you know, um, said what was on his heart and. He was then, at, you know, he asked if he could be put on the table as the men were leaving the room. And these men came up to him crying and hugged him. Man after man after man that was crying. He cried and they hugged him and they thanked him for coming. God used him in a mighty way. You know, uh, like I've said in the past, I would never have prayed for the severe medical condition that I'm in. But since it has happened, I've accepted it. I have not given up on complete healing, whether the Lord does it supernaturally, like, you know, as a miracle, or through, you know, doctors and medicine, um, you know. But in the meantime, I'm living a life full of hope and promise and God's been using me to minister to people who are in similar medical conditions. Moron. You know, people just don't care. They don't care. God bless you, okay? And uh, through my medical, severe medical condition, God has ministered to me in a way that I would not have been able to know him at such a deep level if I did not have these medical conditions. So, um, I do these videos about me being in pain because I wanna encourage others that you, know, there, you can live a life, a full life, a promising life, no matter what your situation is. And there's millions of people who have it a lot worse than I do. But I can only tell you what I'm experiencing, what I have experienced, and how God has been there for me before I got saved and gave my life to Him. And it's been there since I got saved and asked Him to be my Lord and Savior. 21 years walking with Him. And he gives me hope every day. And he uses certain people every day to minister to me and give me strength. And my fiance has told me that she draws strength from me. And I <laughs> I tell her, I, I don't understand. I, I draw strength from you, Maggie. So it's cool how God uses us to be a blessing to others. So in case I don't make another video for the end of the day, I just say uh, goodbye to you now.